Hey guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UFIFIS Extension, Florida Sea Grant agent in Collier County. And today we're gonna learn how to fillet the black drum. So watch the video, read the description. I include a lot of facts I don't talk about in the video as I'm filleting, as well as take the survey linked in the description. So that helps us determine uh, if we should keep on doing these, justify the time and effort spent into uh, doing the literature reviews, um, and my personal time going out and catching these fish for you guys to watch and learn about. So uh, please take that survey link in the description, uh, read the description, and I'm going to move the camera closer to get a better look at my hands and we'll get started. Okay guys, so let's get started. So to give you an idea of scale for our beautiful black drum, this fish is 27 and a half inches long and weighs 10.6 pounds. And uh, these fish, when they're juveniles, can be mistaken for the sheep's head. And uh, a lot of people will say, oh, duh, well, this, this fish is big. You're not going to mistake it for a sheep's head. Well, the world record sheep's head out there, I think, is around 22 pounds or so. So um, this fish is definitely smaller than the world record. But they're a different shaped body, and we're going to go over the differences because luckily for you, I have a sheep's head. So we can look at the differences here of the sheep's head between the black drum. First of all, I can see where you could get mistaken when they're small, when these black drum are small, because they'll have the same amount of bars, like five to six vertical bars. You know, they tell it's sheep's head convict fish. These pectoral fins that you see right here, right? They're like the same shape and size of a black drum. All right, um, scales, you know, they're, they got big, tough scales through the black drum, but these scales are a little bit smaller, right? But the big differences here are these incisors. So sheep's head have these incisors that are meant to shear off barnacles and crack open crustaceans and stuff. They also have molars, um, but black drums, they don't really have, they just gum them down at first. And then they have these pharyngeal jaws in the back that crush them, but black drum have these barbels. So you see those little hairs, they're like little chin whiskers of a catfish almost. Sheep's head don't have those. Another thing that black drums have that sheep's head don't, sort of a flat tail. So you see that tail is flat, right? Sheep's head, forked. So that's an easy way to tell right there. Sheep's head, you know, really tough dorsal spines are really thick. Black drum have really thick dorsal spines too. Look at those things, huge. But sheep's head, the second dorsal is more lobed. So you can see that, it's like lobed. Black drum, second dorsal is more sort of elongated and long, not lobed. So we'll go ahead and put that sheep's head back in the box and get started filleting this black drum. So a lot of people don't like eating the larger black drum because they could have these worms in them called spaghetti worms. They're a type of cestode that usually occurs in the tail portion or maybe even the head portion. But the black drum's the intermediate host and um, the, you can't get that parasite from these fish. Um, the final host of that cestode or the spaghetti worm is inside the intestines of a shark. So you're safe. They're just sort of weird and scary looking, but they are completely safe. Um, so let's go ahead and start filleting this fish. Uh, their scales are super tough. A lot of people dull their knives out on them. Some people use serrated knives or um, even, you know, electric knife to cut them. These fish, um, they, they, you know, there's the black drum, the red drum, but they're actually in two different genuses, but the same family. The red drum um, is, is uh, in the Cyanops oscillatus. That's the scientific name. Um, this, this drum is uh, Pogonius. Chromis. So they're both in the Cyanidae family, which includes drums, croakers, and sea trout. But this uh, this fish, compared to the red drum, it's very sort of high arced back rather than a more streamlined shape. And they have these chin barbels. Uh, other than that, they're pretty similar in terms of where they occur. Um, these fish, the black drum, are the largest of all the drums. So the king of the drum. <laughs> Um, the world record for a black drum is 113 pounds and one ounce out of Delaware. While the world, uh, the Florida record for a black drum is 96 pounds 
uh, and Fernand Fernandina Beach. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut along this dorsal fin. Um, sometimes it's easy if you sort of lift the fin away and you can sort of get in between the scales and the skin before it starts becoming this really tough armor. It's really gonna dull your knife out if you don't either get between the scales or use a serrated knife like I'm doing. So some people ask me, oh, how do you keep your knives so sharp? They're really sharp. Well, I take care of them. So I, I use a knife sharpener pre and post filleting usually, and I try not to cut through thick scales or even ribs on big fish to prevent my knife from, uh, my, my edge from rounding. So I'm cutting all the way towards the head. You're gonna cut all the way down here. And any sort of thicker bodied fish and either even round fish, I like to do both sides, outline it. Because once you remove one side of the fillet, that fish just sort of tilts like that because it, it, it doesn't have anything to lay on. So let's go ahead and do that other side. So once again, I'm gonna try to find my little my little opening, which is between where that dorsal fin starts and where those scales start. It's coming on the skin, cutting all the way up. Okay, so let's get started with my other knife. You can, you can use your serrated knife to fillet these bad boys. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll use my, I'll switch over to my, my go-to fillet knife. Lifting up that meat, doing a skim. Really excited to see if there are any worms or not in there. There may be a couple. Usually they occur in that tail portion or the head portion. Um, it's, that, it's thought that, you know, they, they sort of occur there because of uh, predation. If a shark is going to attack a fish that's usually chasing it and it's going to eat it from behind. So I have this patch right here that I'm going to have to cut diagonally to sort of separate the fillet from the body. I'm going to try to go around the ribs. So this is where you might want to get your serrated knife and uh, do that cut. So sometimes if you want you can lift you can lift the scales up with your knife so instead of just trying to cut through them you can find that little pocket go underneath your scales sort of pop them up and then make an incision so I'm lifting those scales making my cut have this black drum here they're super tasty. I like them a lot. A lot of people knock them when they're larger because of that uh, parasite kind of thing. But they, uh, when they're large, they, they primarily eat a lot of benthic invertebrates, a lot of mussels, oysters, crabs. When they're smaller, um, they could even be known to sort of munch on a couple fish here and there. And it sorts us to uh, eating those oysters and using those big pharyngeal jaws, which are like crushing plates. Like, Teeth, like a throat that has crushing plates in there. <laughs> so these fish have like a pretty wide distribution. You can find them anywhere from um, like Massachusetts up north all the way down to uh, Argentina and like the Western Atlantic. So, okay, so I got this one fillet off and you can see those spaghetti worms right over there. So those look gross, but they are white, so you could f remove them easily. I'm probably just gonna sort of cut out that area, and this filet will be just as delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of the fish. I'm gonna try to, let's go ahead and try to separate it a little bit more before making that cut. So black drum are actually super long-lived fish. Um, there was a study in the Chesapeake Bay area that found one to be 59 years old, and they regularly live uh, around that age. So, uh, you know, put that into consideration when you are releasing a fish. You want to make sure you're getting those big breeders back out because they're long-lived. And because of that wide distribution, I found a, a variety of different kind of uh, information out there, you know, because of a fish in Florida, a fish grown in Florida or Texas, um, will have different living conditions than something in the Chesapeake Bay. But they generally mature at about um, 24 to 26 inches, which can be around four to five years of age. 
And because it can get so large, remember I said the largest of the drums, so that, you know, 113 pounds, it can even get bigger than that. It can produce a lot, uh, a wide, you know, a wide range of eggs. So a female can produce anywhere from 11 to 60 million eggs over a period of uh, the spawning season. So I am alternating knives because I don't want to dull up my regular knife by cutting through scales and gills or scales and ribs. So I'm separating this from the body now. Taking this off. So let's see if this side has any worms to it. And now we look pretty good on this side, so no worms on this side. Go ahead and move that. Look at that big swim bladder. They actually get their name from uh, the drumming sound they ha they make when these uh, muscles contract along their swim bladder, and they they make these noises to communicate. Sometimes they'll do more so during the the spawning season. Um, you can hear it a lot of times when you take them out of the water. But let me go ahead and move this fish to the side. We can start taking the fillet off the skin. So I'm not going to use a serrated knife for that. I'm going to use this uh, fillet knife for that. Move it close to the edge. And I'm going to hover pretty good above those scales because there might be a good as uh, amount of red meat um, if you get pretty close. So let's see how good of a job I could do hovering. pretty good on there. And there's that red over there. There's some meat on the on the skin, but I, I don't really want to eat that. So this is our filet here, and that looks delicious. I'm gonna cut that bloodline out later, but let's go ahead and move that and do the other filet. So these fish, uh, they'll, they'll spawn um, in that spring, winter time. Uh, it just really depends on where you're at geographically. Um, and they can spawn multiple times per season. And uh, usually that occurs about two hours after dark. And they'll do that in passes or near shore or offshore. So look, here's, here's the difference between if I'm really close to the skin. See that, see all that red? I'm gonna trim that up later compared to one that I hover. So you can see that's a little bit more clear. Not as much red on that filet. So I got these these slabs, and that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, read the description. I'm gonna put a lot more information on there. Please take that survey. Let us know how we did, and um, yeah, keep on watching these videos and stay tuned for next week. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, I just forgot. So we still have to take out the Y bones of this filet here, and then I'm going to cut trim up those those worms you see. So you don't want to eat those. They're harmless, even if you eat them raw, but you don't want to eat fish raw, um, you know, without treating it properly. And um, yeah. so let's go ahead. I'm going to clean these up. I'll show you how I'll clean it up. There might be a little bit of a waste in terms of the filet, but I don't really want to ruin my seafood eating experience. So I'm going to trim up this bloodline. I'm going to sort of go on either side of it. Get that off to the side. And uh, sometimes it helps if your filet is cold. So if it's like getting starting to get, you know, sort of, sort of slimy or harder to deal with, you can put it in the fridge and then sort of clean it up more so when you're about to eat it. That's a strategy, just depending on how many fish you have and how long it's been sitting out on your table for. Um, and then, like I said, those those worms, no more worms. Those are over there. And um, same thing with this side, feel around for that those Y bones, cut on either side of it. But it doesn't really matter too much because I'm going to cut sort of the length of the fillet to get that bloodline that um, sort of persists towards the, the tail end portion too. So you can see. See that bloodline there? This so is we're going to cut at an angle on either side of it to remove that. And it is a great fillet. I actually like this more than redfish, a smaller black drum than a redfish. I think they're a little bit more 
uh, whiter um, because of their crustacean diet that they have. So here you have it. Now we're done. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for watching, guys.